This video is a tutorial on how to use the GIMP software for those who are used to Photoshop. Every aspect of GIMP will be covered, from tools and features to workflows. This video will explain everything in a way that makes sense for those who are familiar with Photoshop, making it easy for them to transition to GIMP. For this guide, I am using GIMP 2.99, which is a development version of GIMP. I am using this because, soon enough, it will become GIMP 3.0, so this video will be future-proof. And even you can follow this video if you are using stable GIMP. First we will go through UI and workflow. The first thing you will see after opening GIMP is this layout. The overall concept of the software is the same as Photoshop, but the layout and UI are different. One thing you should know about GIMP is that it is a fully customizable software. If you want, you can easily make GIMP look like Photoshop or even better. So first let's optimize our workspace layout. To do that you can simply move a dockable dialog by grabbing its title bar, and from there you can rearrange the layout in any manner. So if you want you can make it like Photoshop, but I will be keeping my layout like this, as this works better for me. Now let's be familiar with this UI. On the left side you can see the toolbox. This is exactly like Photoshop. There exist all your tools, and they are grouped, which means similar tools exist in the same group. For example, the scale tool and rotate tool exist in the same group. And this dialog is a tool option, it will show you the settings of your selected tool. It's quite important. This is like the header tool setting in Photoshop, and on the right, you can see a layer panel, also similar to Photoshop, but I will cover the layer panel in greater detail in the next section, or you can use the timestamp to skip to that section. Now that we covered the layout and UI parts, let's now cover workflow, and without keyboard shortcut, workflow will be very inefficient. GIMP has very different keyboard shortcut by default. So you can change your keyboard shortcut to a Photoshop one or just learn the default GIMP one. To change the keyboard shortcut, you have to click on the edit menu, then keyboard shortcut, and here you can search for actions and assign a keyboard shortcut to that action. For example, in Photoshop we have Ctrl T for the transform tool, but in GIMP we have Shift T for the unified transform tool, which does the same thing as Photoshop's transform tool. So let's assign a Photoshop keyboard shortcut to this tool in the search box, search for unified transform tool, and align your new shortcut to this tool by pressing the exact same key as your new shortcut. And like this, you can change any keyboard shortcut you want. Save and export are very simple, but you might get confused if you are used to Photoshop. So in GIMP, save means you are saving the currently opened image as a GIMP native XCF file. This is similar to Photoshop's PSD file. In GIMP, if you want to save your image as an image file like PNG or JPEG, then export is the answer. Just click export, then choose your image format, and then click OK. Now you have saved it as an image file. This might be the most important stuff for people, because layers are something we all use all the time in advanced photo manipulation software like GIMP and Photoshop. The whole concept is the same as in Photoshop, but the placement of something might be different, so let's cover all those. At the top of the layer panel we have layer modes, this is also similar to Photoshop, so you can change the blending mode from here, and GIMP has more blending modes than Photoshop, so it's better if you experiment with them. And slightly down from blending mode, we have opacity, and as the name suggests, this reduces the opacity of the selected layer. And at the bottom of the layer panel, we have a bunch of buttons that may be important for you. So the first one is for creating a new layer, the second one is for creating a layer group, and both up and down arrows simply mean that you can move your selected layer up and down. 
and this button duplicates the selected layer, and the seventh button creates a layer mask in your layer. And layer masks work the same as in Photoshop, but you have to look at some area for some options, for example, if you already made a selection and want to mask the selected stuff, then after making the selection, click on the mask button, then select selection, and it will mask the area around your selection. And for some layer mask tricks, if you want to invert your mask, then select the layer mask, go to color, then invert. But now we'll cover layer effects. GIMP has all the features of layer effects, but they are scattered throughout the program. But we have third-party filters that combine all the effects in one place, to install these filters, you have to paste the folder into this path. You can download the effect file from the link in the description. Then to use it, select your layer, then click the slash key, then search for gaggle operation, and here you will see lots of options, but you only need to choose one with gaggle effects. And here you can see all the effects you can use or enable. So it's almost the same as layer effects, so you will be covered for the most part, but if you are also looking for some advanced bevel stuff, then this list of external plugins also has a dedicated bevel effect. And another thing is that when we use layers in Photoshop, we often have to use a clipping mask. To get this in GIMP, use a layer group and put your base layer and effect layer in it, then change the composite mode of the effect layer to clip to the backdrop. The color menu is where you do all the color adjustment, and it is almost the same as Photoshop's color menu or adjustment layer, but everything you do with these is permanent, so it's not a non-destructive feature yet, but you can get away by duplicating the layer and then applying all the effects. When you want to change the exact same effect, simply delete the adjusted layer, duplicate the original layer again, apply the same effect, select the previous effect setting from presets, and then adjust your previous effect again. And here are some common Photoshop color adjustment features that can be found in GIMP, but in different places than in Photoshop. Colorize is the same as the colorize option in Photoshop's hue and saturation. Also, rotate color is the same as Photoshop's hue and saturation's color range option, so you can target a specific color and then change it. Photoshop has a grid warp tool, but GIMP has a curve bend tool that's very easy to use. Just bend the curve in the upper and lower areas, and you will get a bend, and if you want to bend on the sides, you will simply apply the same bend and rotate 90. Now I will cover the selection tool. Photoshop has many selection tools that help you select and refine any subject easily. But GIMP also has a foreground select tool that lets you select and refine your selection fairly easily. To use it, just make a rough selection around your subject. Then press enter. Then you have to paint on your subject, with selection mode switched to the foreground. Then press enter. And you will have a preview of your selection. But if it's not great, then you can refine it by switching to foreground, background, or either unknown and it will let you refine your selection further. And everything else is exactly equivalent to Photoshop, so you don't have to worry about anything else. However, this will get you started with GIMP fairly quickly. When you search for a shape tool in GIMP, you will not find one. But there are a few ways to create shapes, let's go through all of them quickly. The first way is to create a new layer, create a selection, and then fill that selection with color. Another way to do this is with the gfig filter. Just search gfig with a slash key, and then after opening, it will give you a representation of your canvas. Then, just make any shapes in it, and your canvas will have that shape. 